politics, and Florida has a new state representative. Javier Fernandez greeted supporters at his victory party last night. Fernandez will be headed to Tallahassee to represent the 114th district after winning a special election. And tonight we are joined by state representative-elect Javier Fernandez. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, good evening. Nice Thank you. Have you. Congratulations. Great. Good. Glad to be here. Okay, so one of the key issues in your campaign was gun control, and you promised to take on the NRA. Uh, how do you plan to do that, especially in light of the Parkland shooting, with all of the support for the NRA in Tallahassee? Well, I think the last segment is an uh, interesting transition because, frankly, um, there are a lot of things we can do locally to change gun policy here before we even get to Tallahassee. And so I've been working in coalition with my uh, colleagues, prospective colleagues, or candidates as well, to highlight some issues like uh, the practice of hosting gun shows at our local fairgrounds. Uh, those fairgrounds are chartered to basically promote child development and education. And frankly, I can't think of a practice that's more inconsistent with that mission than hosting gun shows there. And uh, to significant profits to the fair. Now, let me ask you about another issue sure. that you talked a lot about, and that is affordable housing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people may not realize that the state of Florida has an affordable housing fund, and there are critics that say that money is not being used for the right purposes. How would you use that money in the state's affordable housing fund? Well, we should use it for its intended purpose. Uh, we have a huge crisis here. Uh, there's 250,000 cost burden homes and uh, households in Miami-Dade County alone, and uh, less than 3,000 units are built a year to meet that demand. That's in large part because we take resources that we tax ourselves for specifically for that purpose and divert them to prop up our general fund at the state level. So I'm going to be a proponent for making sure that special tax revenue is used only for that purpose. Uh, we need to leverage that money to bring down more federal resources uh, and redouble our commitment in this area because it's important to create spaces and places for our firefighters, teachers, uh, hospitality personnel that are all the backbone of our local economy, our communities here, have a place to live and reside in the communities they work. We should mention that you won what was a special election last night. Yes, sir. You'll have to run again to win a full term in November, so uh, you're going to get right back to the campaign trail, I guess. Uh, but I'm wondering, because we have the midterm elections that are coming up later this year, a lot of people are predicting that the Democrats, uh, uh, year one, uh, are going to do very well in November because of the unpopularity of President Trump and, uh, and, and other matters as well. Do you look at your victory last night as being representative at all? of what we might see across the country later this year in the midterms. Uh, absolutely, but I think we need to uh, take uh, recognition of the fact that it can't just be about the president. Uh, frankly, uh, what excites me most about my district is it's one that's very evenly balanced. Uh, it's practically a third, a third, a third in terms of the registration by party affiliation and non-party affiliation. So I think for Democrats to win, as we did last night, we need a message that is attractive to all parties. It's inclusive. It's focused on the day-to-day -day issues that impact working families uh, across South Florida. And I think we won because we were able to draw a larger than expected, substantially larger than expected uh, percentage of Republican voters. Proud to say that 20 to 25 percent of Republican voters in the district voted for my candidacy. I think that's the formula we need. Why if do you gonna, think they did that? I think because we're talking about issues that matter to everyone. Uh, transportation, uh, gun reform, uh, you know, affordable housing, education, our backbone issues that impact families at all income levels, uh, all socio of all socioeconomic uh, backgrounds. And so if, if we are focused on those issues and creating a society that's more just and produces fair outcomes for everyone, I think it's a, a message that will resonate for Democrats uh, across the state of Florida. And let me ask you, because you're Cuban-American, yes. and a lot of people uh, expect Cuban-Americans to vote Republican. What sort of reaction did you get from the younger generation of Cuban-American voters? Well, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that I think Jose Javier Rodriguez and myself are uh, the two first Cuban-American Democrats to have some electoral success in this community in recent years. Uh, I think we're going to see that become a much more uh, common trend. Uh, certainly it's not been popular to be a Democrat from my early adulthood, but uh, I think people want to see people of goodwill, talented people uh, of all backgrounds in the process. Uh, I think there's an opportunity to speak to people about their day-to-day -day issues. I think the Democrats have the formula right in terms of balancing the needs of business and the needs of community uh, to create a community where everyone has a chance to uh, grow, succeed, and prosper. All right, Representative, congratulations on thank your you victory. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thanks for coming us. by. Appreciate thank it. Thank you.